So let's just take a second to review the partnership model, the responsibilities of HR managers within an organization. So in the partnership model, HR professionals are partnering with line managers throughout an organization to provide advice and counsel when they have questions or concerns, to provide a service to the organization in the forms of things like payroll, benefits, perhaps even training and development. HR is a partner in policy formation and implementation. And last but not least, HR is the employee advocate. If you took a look at a quick video by Jack Welch, hopefully you didn't have too much trouble understanding him. I just want to give you a bit of background about Jack Welch and talk about why he's so important. He was a chairman and CEO of General Electric between 1981 and 2001. During his time at GE, the company value rose 4,000%. That's huge. In 2006, his net worth was estimated at $720 million. When he retired from GE, he took a severance package of $417 million, the largest such payment ever made in history. His public philosophy was that a company should be either number one or number two in a particular industry, or else they should leave it completely. His strategy was later adopted by other CEOs across corporate America. Because of all of these reasons, his support of human resources and the champion of human resources was huge. It changed the face of HR and the perception of HR across companies around the world. You heard him talk about human resources and how important they are. Do you agree or disagree with his character, characterization of the HR function? I really appreciate his discussion and his characterization of parent and pastor. That HR needs to be both a parent in terms of providing guidance, support, direction, and sometimes discipline, and also a pastor in the keeping of secrets. So let's just take a second and make sure that we fully understand what it is that we're talking about when we talk about human resources management. Human resources management or HRM is about the process of managing human talent to achieve an organization's objectives. You'll hear throughout this semester, I'm going to use the term human resources and human resources management interchangeably and you might wonder why we sometimes use management. It's the same thing. Human resources is a function. Human resources management is about developing and utilizing employees, which is why typically you hear now HRM instead of just HR used in the world, because it is a process of managing talent. So why study human resources management? Well, we think about your own experience at work. In the workplace, what are we doing? We put strangers together. We ask them to collaborate as a team and the glue that holds people together is human resources management. In every organization around the world, we ask people to come together to build a successful organization and to collaborate in meeting the same set of goals. This collaboration glue is human resources management. Great business plans, products, and services can easily be copied by your competitors. In today's global marketplace, it's very hard to come up with a product that can't easily be copied by a local or global competitor. The great thing is that great employees cannot be copied. That is what we're going to be discussing here for a few minutes is the topic of human capital. I am human capital, you are human cap. Companies have a competitive advantage through their people. An organization's success relies increasingly on its ability to manage its human talent or capital. So human capital is defined as the knowledge, skills, and abilities or capabilities of individuals that have an economic value to an organization. Human capital is intangible. If you think about it, 
I can lock a product, a drawing, a schematic in a box. The person that created that drawing or schematic, I can't very well lock them into a box. Ideas can be patented, however, employees cannot be patented. If an employee leaves the company, the company loses their knowledge, usually which is not written down, and all of the investment that they've made in them. Think of an example of a company where a person left and the expertise dropped dramatically. One famous example we often hear about is Steve Jobs and Apple, and how once Steve Jobs left Apple, he had to be re rehired years later because the expertise and even the share price dropped off so dramatically. If you think about the ramifications to the stock price, right, to the shareholders of the business, but not just for big companies, what about small companies? What would happen at a mom and pop store if mom and pop decided to leave? In small businesses especially, the human capital may be almost completely tied up in one or two key individuals. Their talent, the service they provide, and the reputation of those individuals are, in fact, the business. To mitigate the risk, human resources has to have a variety of different practices. Recruiting, training, making sure that the morale is good to keep good human capital. Human capital, because it's intangible, cannot be managed the same way an organization manages products and technology, for instance. You own your own human capital. It's not owned by the organization. That means all of the training that is invested in you is something that you take with you, almost like in an invisible backpack that you walk around with. Should you leave that organization, you take all of that training and investment with you. So we've talked about the framework for HR, the nine pillars. These are the structures and the roles and responsibilities of HR. This HR structure, as we've discussed, works in a partnership model with other managers. I like to think of it like building a house. The foundation of the house is the human capital of the organization. They're the base, that's where we start our building. The framework for HR, those nine functional areas, are all of the pillars around the building. But HR can't do it alone. We still need all of the drywall, the roofer, the electricians, the plumbers, all of the other services in order to build a successful house. While we're building that house though, there are some invisible employee concerns that face HR every day. So take a look at this diagram. This is a great way to think about the framework for HRM. In the middle, this yellow box represents HR activities and initiatives, those nine pillars that we've talked about, recruiting, staffing, training, communicating, compensation, benefits, all the things we've discussed. And then the box to the right, employee concerns. Think about your own experience in the workforce. You may have many concerns that you bring into the job with you every day that you may not be sharing with anybody else. Things like concerns around job security. Will you have a job next year, next month? You may have health care issues, your own personal health care that you're dealing with or someone that you love. Again, those are invisible to human resources, but they may be something that's impacting your performance. You may have concerns about age or generational work issues. So for instance, as a young person, you may be managing someone who's much older than you. And that may be creating some generational work issues. For some people in the workplace, they may have one foot out the door and be thinking about retirement. They may be concerned about retirement as well, about when can they retire? When will they have enough money to retire? We still have gender issues in the workplace, men working with women, women working with men, and some conflict there at times. We have a variety of different educational levels in the workplace. We have people concerned about their rights and whether employers are res respecting their rights. 
we may also have concerns about privacy issues in the workplace. You might be wondering how many people in the workplace know your personal information, for instance, and what is the company doing with all that information that they gather about you? Other concerns can be things like work attitudes, something like work-life balance. That means something different to everyone. And last but not least, we all have family concerns. Again, these are invisible concerns. We may be worried about family members, about a variety of different things. And those are things that we are bringing into the workplace with us. Human resources is really about the human element at work. Human resources can't be blind to the fact that everyone coming in through the door every day has a whole variety of invisible concerns that they're bringing in with them. We're going to stop there for a minute. I'm going to ask you to do a quick activity thinking through some of these concerns that people might be bringing in and trying to think through how those might impact human resources. After we finish that activity, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the competitive challenges that are facing HR and business today.